I went to school for painting, and uh, but I'm the type of person that likes to do a experiment a lot. So in time, I also learned stained glass, uh, computer graphics, um, all different anything that I can get a hold of. I don't really have a particular style of uh, painting because I love to experiment with the paint and see what it could do. I may be painting a certain way for a period of time, enjoy it, and then max out on it. And then I'll change. I love to experiment. I like to use uh, vivid, intense colors. Um, I like to use uh, a lot of depth in my paintings and sometimes maybe the subject matter. I started painting angels when I was working with uh, child abuse. I'm an art therapist also and I have a child sexual abuse program in Indianapolis and of course I prayed a lot when I was doing that job and um, started painting angels then. Um, most often when I paint them, um, I would paint the, the virtue or quality that I'm needing at that time. And by painting them, I feel like it's my way of calling that out. If I need strength or clarity or whatever I need at that time, that is what I do. And then in time, people started asking me to paint a special angel for them. Uh, and then I would kind of discern what that person needs, and that's what I would paint for them. People have, they've come back to me to relate to me what has happened when they gave a picture to somebody. I had a friend who um, gave the angel of clarity to one of her friends uh, who was having difficulty uh, with her vision, and she told me that the angel of clarity was hanging on her wall and that was the only thing she could see. So uh, it's kind of really nice feedback that, to, to know that it's doing something. I do a lot of praying when I'm painting things like that, for, especially for somebody or if somebody's having some difficulty or, or if a request was given to me. I'm from the Philippines, and my partner is from uh, here, but he's part Native American. Uh, we st study a lot of different kinds of spirituality. I think that everything that anybody touches will carry their energy. So I don't paint when I'm feeling bad, knowing that those paintings will be hanging in somebody's home. They'll be living with that painting. So. As an artist, I want to use my paintings as a vehicle for creating more harmony in the house. Um, it works that way with the angels as well. I think the intent is really important. I love painting landscapes because actually just the beauty of nature. Um, I'm in awe of it myself. And most of the landscapes I paint are places that I've been to. Um, it's very hard for me to paint a landscape where somebody can just give me a picture and say, paint this, because part of my painting is that the energy that I get from that place, when I go to a certain place, I bring it back, and then I put it on canvas. I try to reflect how I felt while I was standing on that hill or looking at a certain place that um, I've enjoyed looking at. I work a lot with the, the, the temperature of the color, cool and hot colors, what colors go back, what colors re uh, recede, what colors come forward. Um, different kinds of yellows. Some yellows will go back and some yellows would come forward. Some reds would go back and some reds would come forward. So I use a lot of those techniques to convey the message that I would like to come out from the landscape, which is most of the time it's the strength of nature. 
I've always wanted to be an artist, uh, ever since I was small, yes. Uh, in fact, uh, I actually was in uh, veterinary, veterinary school in uh, Spain. I went to school in Spain and came back and said, no, I want to be an artist. So I gave up a lot to be an artist. <laughs> I gave up veterinary school. That would have been a more stable job for me. Or, uh, and I could continue on to be a doctor. But that is not what I wanted to do. It, it, uh, it's in, when something is inside of you and it wants to come out, it's gonna win. It's gonna win. Even if I practiced a different vocation for a period of time, the bottom line, I think that uh, you cannot fight that and be happy at the same time. Back in uh, 2006, I was a part of a global team of people uh, who were trying to uh, do something good. We were trying to raise funds for water purifiers uh, that can be installed in different places in Africa. In that process, I, had, I met a lady named Rosette, who is um, a Ugandan woman, and we had emailed each other and wanted to work together to help the disadvantaged artisans in Uganda, which were mostly mothers who are supporting their children. Rosette organized in Uganda, and over here I mobilized some people to create funds for tools that the women may need. Uganda Women Empowerment Through Crafts actually started as a friendship between two women from different continents. And from that, um, we began to brainstorm together as to what can the women do, what can they sell, uh, so that they can continue to provide housing and food for their children. They started sending me these paper beads, and this is how the paper beads came about. You know, they would sneak it in the boxes so I can see it. And I said, wow, these are really neat. So I started ordering the paper beads. And then um, one of the biggest gifts that they thought was really a reason for celebration was when we gave them enough money to buy three little paper cutters. Well, they're big paper cutters, but paper cutters. Uh, because to make these beads, you have to cut long strips of paper, and they were doing them with small scissors the whole time. These paper cutters was like progress. That was something that they really enjoyed. When I first brought the beads out here in Louisville, everybody just loved them. Rainbow Blossom carries the beads, and then Amazing Grace carries the beads. Um, Lexi's Trading Post on Bardstown Road. And I also have um, different stores that have since then started calling me. Um, I have one in Washington, one in New York, one in Kansas. So uh, it's starting to expand in that way. And um, I would love to it for, for, for the, the paper beads to expand more because the more beads are bought, are bought the more the women are helped. At one time, Rosette was taking women off the streets and pairing them with maybe an expert basket maker or, or an expert bead maker so that she can have a way to feed herself and her children, uh, which is, I think, a really nice thing, you know, that is happening in that organization. It's not just artisans selling, but also artisans helping each other helping other women, you know, helping those who need to learn skills so they can survive. Art is really important. They will say art is the bearer of culture. So, um, and I do think that um, 
it needs to be supported. Definitely, definitely. If you walk, I mean, if you can imagine yourself walking into a place and all the walls are bare, this world would be a sterile place.